commemorating the moment now on the count of one. Please push the button. Three, two, one. Let's open G spell. able to become the battery qualifiers so that will be able basically increased mission duration you can, you can run the, the their experiment in Fort Benning Georgia this past fall and uh, this is a venue that allows soldiers to um, Mike Rottmeyer here from the Air Force Research Lab you can talk a little bit about the, the, the piston rods were seized right onto the crank and you were going nowhere and that's why you're in advanced spec right right that's why we're at 99.9 I'm just feeling it. Go ahead and talk. Now this is our main focus today because of the power and efficiency. Because this unit requires very little uh, power and it's very efficient as it only has to cool the soldiers. Um, they wear these microclimate, what's called a microclimate cooling vest, underneath their garments and it actually presses micro channels that flow through here and this flows water through an umbilical that is cooled by this unit. Uh, the work here at TARDEC has already uh, saved lives uh, in many, many ways, uh, including uh, protection of our troops uh, through vehicle protection. But this lab today is uh, a coming together of the best minds, the best equipment, the best testing facilities all in one place. It's a collaborative effort. Its point here is to give our troops the safety which will result from having to use less energy. Bottom line here is the troops. Our troops right now are in harm's way in Afghanistan. We have lost troops protecting convoys of fuel. We are trying to produce vehicles that use less fuel. We're going to produce better fuels. We're going to do it all here at the, the world's best integrated facility for the development and testing for advanced fuels and the technologies which will create them. So it's the lives of our troops and the success of their mission, which is what we're all about here today. How will collaboration with industry and academia affect the mission? Well, there's a lot of brains in this world. We think, uh, of course, they're concentrated here in Michigan because uh, that's where the motor vehicle capital of the world is. It's, uh, and this is now the, the best facility globally for the testing uh, of the uh, ideas, uh, of, the tech, of the innovation, uh, which uh, comes out of the minds of uh, people who are free people can think freely and so it's collaboration we've got all of the, the pieces of the DOD uh, that are involved in energy and in vehicles here uh, in one place in an integrated way uh, we've got the, the DOE joining up now the DOE now joining up with the DOD in a collaboration which Dr. Westfall has been so vitally involved in bringing about and this will be a magnet. This is going to attract young people, young engineers, young scientists. The industry is here already. They've been here now for many, many years using this facility in collaborations. This is the synergy which is produced when you've got people who have a common mission, who are free to think, uh, to join together in a common cause. Why is energy so important to the Army? Well, you know, we are, uh, we're people driven. The Navy is, uh, their platform is uh, the ship, the Air Force is the airplane, our platform is the soldier. Uh, we are shaping an army of 2020, an army of the future, with a new strategy that looks at an army that needs to be able to shape, win, and defeat. Shape means a, an army that's going to need to be prolific throughout the world, uh, 
an army that's going to need to build partnership to deter aggression, but an army that's also going to be ready to win any fight that it's set to fight. That army needs mobility. That army needs to be shaped around the basis of moving soldiers to the battlefield and getting them the equipment that they need. That's why the foundations of science and technology research that are in this laboratory and that are the basis for everything that we do to develop our force of the future uh, are in the basic science tools that we're going to develop here in this lab. Great. Um, what impact do you think the uh, high-tech research, the <coughs> research that's being done here has for the individual soldier? Well, I, first of all, it's already had huge impact because the research has been gone, ongoing for a long time. It should continue and will continue, in my view, to have even greater impact. We need to lessen the weight uh, of what a soldier carries. We need to lessen the dependence on certain kinds of fuels and energies on the part of soldiers because of the things you've heard. I don't want to be repetitive and say the same things, but to tell you the truth, the fact is that we need to be much more energy efficient. We need a soldier that is lighter, uh, can move faster in the battlefield, can move uh, under different terrains. Uh, the studies here, for example, that will be able to look at how terrains operate in different environments is critical. We don't know if in the future we'll be in the pole, we'll be in a jungle, or we'll be in a desert. But wherever our soldiers are, we need them protected, we need them mobile, we need them lightweight, and we need them to be...